Hi, in this video we will be going over the essential topics from grade 9 math. If you understand everything in the video, you will be super prepared for grade 10 math. First, let's talk about number sets. These are basically different groups of numbers. Natural numbers are the counting numbers, starting at 1 and going on forever. Whole numbers are the natural numbers and 0. Integers also include negative numbers. Rational numbers include all of those number sets and decimal numbers that can be written as a fraction. On the other hand, irrational numbers cannot be written in the form of a fraction. All these number sets are part of the real numbers. Next, let's discuss intro to algebra. We use letters called variables to represent unknown numbers. Here's an example where x and y are variables. Using variables allows us to sub in many different numbers in place of x and y, and it can also be useful in situations where we don't know what number the variable represents. Numbers multiplying in front of the variables are called coefficients, and numbers without variables are called constants. The 5x, 4.5y cubed, and 19 are terms. Like terms can be combined because they have the same variable and the same exponent. For example, 2x squared plus x squared are like terms that can be simplified into 3x squared, but if we had 2x squared and just x without the squared here, they would no longer be like terms. An expression is made up of terms adding and subtracting, such as in the example here. Now we can extend this to solving equations. An equation is made by setting two expressions equal to each other, such as this example. An important idea is that both sides of the equation remain equal if you do the same thing to both sides. For example, you could add 100 to both sides and they would still be equal. A solution to an equation makes the left side equal the right side when you sub in that number in place of the variable. There could be multiple, one, or no solutions to an equation. The goal of algebra is to use inverse operations to isolate the variable to find the solution. Let's look at an example of how to actually apply these ideas. Here we want to find the solution. In other words, we want to find which number in place of x would make both sides equal. So we want to isolate x and get it by itself on one side of the equation to allow us to find the solution. Let's use inverse operations in the opposite order of bed mass. Bed mass says we would do addition and subtraction last, so now we're going to do that first to kind of undo the bed mass to isolate x. We can subtract 1 from both sides because this is the inverse operation of adding 1. Remember, it's okay to do the same thing to both sides, they're still equal. This simplifies to 2x equals 8, so we have made some progress towards isolating x. The inverse operation of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2, so let's divide both sides by 2. This gives us x equals 4, which is the solution to the equation. We can check our work by subbing in 4 in place of x into the original equation. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 gives us 9. So we have left side equals right side because both sides are equal to the same thing. This shows that the solution x equals 4 is correct. Now let's review negatives rules for multiplying numbers. Two positive numbers gives a positive answer, two negative numbers also gives a positive answer, but a negative times a positive gives a negative answer. Next are power rules. Here we have 2 cubed as an example. The base is 2 and the exponent is 3. This means we're multiplying 2 by itself 3 times, which is 8. There's a lot of rules that you should know, so you can just look at the screen to copy these down rather than me reading them all. They're all general cases, so I've used x to represent the base, and a and b represent the numbers on the exponent. You can pause the video here to make sure that you understand and can apply these rules. Alright, next are fraction rules. When adding or subtracting fractions, we make a common denominator, add or subtract the numerators, and reduce if needed. For example, here we can make a common denominator of 12, and then add the numerators to get 11 12s as our final answer. For multiplying fractions, we multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and reduce if needed. So for example, we'd have 1 times 2 for the numerator, and 4 times 3 gives us 12 for the denominator. This reduces down to 1 sixth. Finally, for dividing fractions, we multiply the first fraction by the reciprocal of the second fraction, and then we do multiplication as usual. In this case, the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 over 2, because we're just turning it upside down. Now we can follow the steps for multiplying to get 3 eighths as our answer. 
Let's look at a bit of geometry now. The acute triangle has all angles less than 90 degrees, while the obtuse triangle has one angle larger than 90 degrees. The right triangle has a 90 degree angle. In this case, the Pythagorean theorem applies, which is the mathematical relationship that's true for all right triangles. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side, and it's across from the right angle. a and b are the other two sides, which are the legs of the triangle. It does not matter which of these two sides is a or which is b. Here are some important angle relationships found from a line intersecting two parallel lines. Alternate angles in this z pattern are equal. Corresponding angles in this f pattern are also equal. And the co-interior angles add to 180 degrees. Another important topic is graphing using the Cartesian plane. The Cartesian plane is made of the x and y axes intersecting at a right angle to each other. Each axis continues forever in both directions, where y is vertical and x is horizontal. We can plot points on the Cartesian plane by writing the x and y coordinates separated by a comma. For example, 2, 1 represents x is 2 and y is 1. 0, negative 2 represents x is 0 and y is negative 2. The Cartesian plane can be used to plot linear relations, in other words, a straight line. This line can be represented by an equation relating x and y. x is the independent variable. This means we can choose different values of x and put them into this equation to get the corresponding y values. Notice that x always has exponent 1 in linear relations. y is the dependent variable. It depends on which values of x we've input into the equation m is a parameter representing the slope of the line. For example, you could have a line with 3 in place of m. This indicates a slope of 3. Finally, b is a parameter representing the y-intercept. This is the y-value where the line crosses the y-axis. In this example, b is 1 because the line crosses the y-axis at 1. The slope can be described as the rise of the line divided by the run of the line or the difference between the y values of two points on the line, divided by the difference in the x values of those same points. For example, let's look at these two points. We go up 3 in the y direction, so the rise is 3, and we go forward 3 in the x direction, so the run is 3 as well. So the slope is 3 over 3, which gives us 1. Therefore, the equation that represents this specific line is y equals x plus 1, because the y-intercept b is 1, and we've just calculated that the slope m is also 1. Let's look at linear relations in more detail. We can make a table of values showing some of the x and y points on the line. The first differences are found by subtracting the previous y-value, as long as we've been increasing by the same x amount each time. So 1 minus 0 gives us a first difference of 1. 2 minus 1 also gives us a first difference of 1. Notice linear relations always have constant first differences. A line going down has a negative slope. A line going up has a positive slope. A horizontal line has zero slope. And a vertical line has an undefined slope. A steeper line would have a larger slope. This is the last topic, so we're almost done. Let's look at the point of intersection of two lines. In other words, where the lines cross each other. At the point of intersection, both lines have the same x and y values. In this case, x is 0 and y is 1 for both lines by looking at the graph. If we want to find the point of intersection algebraically, we can solve for the x value that makes the y values of both lines equal. This line is y equals x plus 1, and this line is y equals 1. So we can set them equal to get x plus 1 equals 1. Let's isolate x by subtracting 1 from both sides, which simplifies to x equals 0. This answer means the point of intersection occurs where x equals 0. To find the y value of the point of intersection, we can plug in x equals 0 into the equation of either of these lines. In this example, things are a little bit easier because we have a line that's just y equals 1. So y does not depend on x. In this case, y always equals 1 regardless of what x equals. So we know that the y value of the point of intersection must be 1. Therefore, the point of intersection is at 0, 1. And that is everything you need to know from grade 9 math. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this was helpful.